Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look of something new from Brain FPV. This is their new Radix 2 and the new power distribution board that goes along with it. Now I'm a fan of Brain FPV stuff uh, initially because they were doing some really smart stuff with on-screen displays. All of the Brain FPV stuff at the moment has the vector-based on-screen display and this one has some tweaks to it as well that I'll cover. In fact, you'll see Brain FPV in a couple of my builds. I did the Brain Dart build uh, Christmas last year. That was putting a Radix flight controller with a wing power distribution board into a ZOHD Dart. I still fly that regularly. And then before that, it was putting uh, a similar system into a Bixler. And that had a little pan and tilt server on there as well. So I'll put links below if you're interested and go and have a look at this. But this video is more to focus on this new Radix 2 and what the differences are. So let's talk about some of the headlines. First of all, of course, is that the Radix 2 is using a new processor. It's using a H7 processor running at 480 megahertz with one meg of RAM. Now the H7 is the high watermark in terms of the available processors at the moment. Uh, other people have brought out flight controllers with that on, so it's not unique to Brain FPV, but you'll see them in places like the Pixhawk Cube more commonly these days. It's nice to see it on a small board like this. New gyro, so it's a Bosch SensorTech BMI 270 gyro, and the latest barometers on here as well, a Bosch SensorTech BMP388. Another thing that's changed on here is it does have an improved on-screen display. Initially, if you flash something like Betaflight onto this, uh, and at the moment, the support for it is pretty much going to be only Betaflight. Uh, Betaflight supports the H7 processor right now. iNav won't support it until 2.7. And potentially, it could also run things like RD Pilot as well, but at the moment, that's not talked about on the website. The on-screen display, if you put Betaflight on it, will look very similar to the existing on-screen display that you've probably seen and fallen in love with on other Brain FPV kit. However, this flight controller has an extra couple of bits, so it allows for some more funky stuff. So we can have black, white, uh, greys, and also uh, semi-transparent versions of that as well, which means that in the future, Brain FPV can continue to develop their really beautiful vector-based on-screen display and give us some really nice effects with that too. Dual camera input on this, similar to a lot of the latest Matek flight control boards. Really handy if you have an analog system. Just be aware if you're using something like rapid fire, switching between cameras doesn't work very well because it loses the sync. VTX pit switch. Uh, this allows you to turn on and off the video transmitter. The voltage for the video transmitter on here is selectable to either be 5 volts or the battery voltage. And the cool thing is, is the switch has an integrated high speed resettable fuse. If you try and pull more than about 1.5 amps out of that VTX uh, connection, then it will automatically disconnect the supply uh, and just protect itself. And that's handy if you accidentally get something the wrong way around or you have an accidental short. 32 meg of built-in flash memory. Uh, 30 meg is available for logging and setting storage, which is brilliant. That means that we could save an awful lot of information down into black box if you wanted to use it with something like iNav when it's supported, with something like the Dashware program. Another big innovation in this is the driverless flashing. So the idea is, is that when you connect it to the computer, it appears as a mass storage device. You copy the firmware file onto the flight controller and then when it power cycles the next time, it actually goes through a bootloader sequence and will flash itself, which is really cute. Uh, that's not unique to these guys. Uh, Seriously Pro did something with their H7 flight controller as well. It just, it's a nice way to do it and stops all the messing around with things like DFU. It's just a case of copying a file to a drive on your PC or your Mac, which is something we all know how to do and works all the time. Six serial ports on this, so there's loads and loads of things to go at, so you shouldn't run out of room if you want things like airspeed sensors or sonar, LIDARs or whatever. Uh, I2C port, first time we've had that on one of the Brain FPV flight controllers. USB Type-C connector, and it's 37 by 37 millimeters, standard 30.5 millimeter hole spacing, and it weighs about seven grams. The Radix 2 power board 
also has quite a few tricks up its sleeve. Uh, when you pull this out, you'll realize that there's an awful lot of copper in here. This will handle 160 amps or 220 amps burst total current to the motors. And you can tell by the weight, this is 15 grams. There's a lot of copper in here to allow that to happen. 49 by 49 millimeters. This one is plug and play with the Radix 2 flight controller. There's a 10 pin cable that comes with it, allows you to stack it really simple. Supports up to 8S, that's about 35 volts battery voltage. And another real cool thing that I haven't seen before is a dedicated slot for you to attach the capacitor on the side. Now the way this tends to work at the moment is that when you're putting something together you attach a capacitor, you kind of solder it over the top of the power pin connections. So at first I was looking at this and thinking oh that's really clever, they've actually given us a dedicated space for us to put the cap on, what a clever idea. However, this isn't just a capacitor, it's actually a full LC filter circuit. And that other part of it, the inductor, is by the side. So the capacitor and the inductor will create a really clean power supply for the entire system. On board is a 5 volt 2 amp voltage regulator and it can be switched to 10 volts for powering a camera or a digital FPV system. So there we have it, a quick overview of this new flight controller, the Radix 2, and the new power distribution board. Talking to Martin at Brain FPV, sounds like they're also thinking of bringing out a wing power distribution board. Um, I hope they do bring out a wing power distribution board, if I can say it, because uh, I would definitely use this in uh, a fixed wing or another build. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that. I'm going to put this to one side and uh, put it in a model when the INAV support is here. Uh, and also that gives the Brain FPV another month or two to uh, do some of the cool stuff that they're thinking of doing with the on-screen display that will take advantage of that extra little bit of uh, bit depth that are available for the OSD elements to potentially give us uh, some new funky stuff. Uh, the on-screen display from Brain FPV is beautiful, but I'm quite ready for it to be uh, zhuzhed up a little bit. And hopefully with this flight controller, it will give them the hardware to be able to do it. There's an awful lot of processing power on a H7 CPU, so they can offload some of that on-screen display goodness to the CPU and still be running Betafly iNav or who knows, even RD Pilot in future. So you'll definitely see these on the channel again. I'm going to put them down to one side and they will appear in a build. Uh, it sounds like these, this initial batch sold out incredibly quickly. And talking to the guys at uh, Brain FPV, sounds like the next lot will be coming in. Uh, it's going to be a month or two before they're going to have stock again. Uh, so if you do see these in a local reseller, uh, get hold of them because uh, if you want to do a build with one and again only really beta flight supported right now uh, you won't see them until probably the spring thank you for spending your time today watching that video you can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist all of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff